Hello everyone, welcome back to Crafts by the Bow. Today I'm going to be making a little box that I can put note cards in. And I first saw the little box made by one of our demonstrators called Julie Davison. And she'd used, let me just get them, one of our acetate card boxes. And let me take one out and show you. These come flat packed. So they don't look like much of a box at the moment, but what you do is you just, they're all pre-scored, so you just bend along the score lines and it makes into a box. But before I do that, I want to show you what Julie had done. Using her trimmer, she'd cut straight across here, across the middle, so that she had two half boxes. And those half boxes were what she used to make the little gift box. And one of these would actually make two little gift boxes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them so that they're horizontal and I'm going to cut the top off. And now I can show you how they just fold out a little bit. Don't be afraid of them, they don't break. They just push it into place. Okay, so you can see it makes this little this little box shape and these edges fold in. Now, I want to cut it so that my opening is here and not at this side. So what I did was I took my scissors and I cut, if you can see that, right down the middle here. I just cut right down. And then I got my trimmer out and it looks like this once you've cut it and I just put it into the trimmer and cut straight down so that I had a nice, sharp, crisp edge. So I just cut the two edges off. So it would be cut up to this corner here, this fold and this one. And then what you need to do is you need to go along the folds, just bend it, tuck in the little corner pieces Fold also these flaps. Now because we've dismantled the box, there isn't anything to keep it together here. So all I'm using is just a little glue dot on the corner. I'll just fold the other side first. I'll just move this and then you can see a little bit better. It's tricky to see because it's an acetate box. I haven't chosen the easiest thing to show you, just for visibility. Oops. There we go. So, so ordinarily, the box would have that side already built in and you would have this perfect little box. But I just wanted something different. So with my glue dots, I'm going to get one. You don't need much to keep it together. And I'm going to put it right in this corner, in the open corner. I hope you can sort of see where that is. You see it's just on the corner. And I'm just going to fold the edges in as though it was still a whole box. Squash that together. And that will be strong enough to hold it. I'm going to get another little glue dot from here. Again, I'm going to put it on the corner of the box just squash it down. Now I'm just going to take my bone folder and just push those edges in so that the little flap at the bottom is laying, laying down. There we go. This. There we are. Now it's laying down. I'll do the same with the other side. Now if you feel that one isn't strong enough for you, you could always put another one at each corner at the bottom here. But I found that just those two glue dots hold the box together perfectly. Now this is what the box looks like when it's finished. So, and inside I've got four little note cards and envelopes and I used the Love What You Do set just to make these easy little notelets. And they fit in there just perfectly. 
and I think four little cards and envelopes would make a super little gift for anybody. You know, it's such a sweet little bag. So we'll pop that there and I'll show you how we make the inside piece. So you need to have a piece of DSP and I've chosen all from the same suite. I've chosen the paper that goes with this suite. And your piece of paper now is going to be five and three quarters across and it's going to be nine and one eighth down. So what I did after I cut it, I then put it into the trimmer to score. And it's very tricky to see the score lines on here because they actually end up being on the white part of the pattern. <laughs> so sorry about that. So my first score mark, I did at four and a quarter. So I went down four and a quarter and I scored all the way across. And then rather than doing any difficult maths or anything, I turned it round and I went down to four and a quarter and scored again. So in this little piece here, if I fold it a little bit, you'll be able to see. I think this works out five eighths of an inch. But rather than measuring five eighths of an inch, it's easier, four and a quarter, turn it round, four and a quarter. Okay. So that's going to be our inside piece. Now, I was lucky with this piece of paper because it's non-directional. It doesn't matter which way it goes. But for this piece that I used, the flowers go fine on this side, but on this side they're upside down. Now, if that does bother you, what you can do is cut across here on the paper, turn it round and put it in that way. But because mine, I'm not really bothered about, it just has the flowers on the one side and you know, the direction doesn't bother me for the other side. Okay, so we're going to put this inside here. Where you've got these edges that are folded in, that's going to become the back. And so this literally just slides in. Slides in and sticks on that little, that little piece has popped up. Let me just pop that back down again. I'm going to put it that way this time. Ah, that's better. That's holding it better. I'm going to do the same at the other side. There we go. I'll just pop my little piece right back in and push it down. And I'm not going to glue it in. I'm not going to attach it at all because it really doesn't need it. It will stay in there just perfectly. There we go. Okay, now... For the ribbon to go round, I cut a piece of matching ribbon at 36 inches and I've got the berry burst ribbon. And all I did, 36 inches is a bit long, but all I did was I just went across 12, 24, 36, and then I knew I had enough. Give or take an inch or two, it doesn't matter. And then we're going to attach it so that it has the handle. And what I'm using is my tear and tape. So all I did was I popped it on here in the middle so that I could decide where I wanted the handle to be. And let me find the edge of the tear and tape. Okay. Because this has got a little, uh, little linear pattern, it's going to be much easier. But all I did was just I went across the front sort of eyeballed that I had it straight then on the bottom and then all the way up the other side. If it makes it easier for you to see you can take out the inside and then as you're attaching it on this side you can just look to see where the line of your adhesive is on the back and follow that line. As I said, I had an easy pattern there to line it up with, with it being dotty and in lines anyway. Okay, so I'm just going to put mine back in, like that. And I'm going to do just the same again and try and get it roughly the same on this side. And if you look on here, I've got one, two, three, four, just about five squares 
before my tape starts. So I'm going to try and do the same at this side. One, two, three, four, five. It's going to be that line there. Across the bottom and all the way up. And then just tear this off. I think tear and tape is about the best thing to use for this because ribbon doesn't like wet tape very much. I found that if I use the, um, the wet glue, not wet tape, if I use the wet glue, it can make the ribbon, sometimes it sort of leaks through and sometimes it just looks a bit sticky or it goes a uh, slightly different color. Okay, so I'm going to take the adhesive uh, strip off so that I can put my handle on. And we're going to start on the bottom. So I'm just going to turn it round, start this halfway across at the bottom, just so that when we come back round, you've got a little bit of tape there already. I'm going to take this out because I think it's easier for you to see the adhesive. I'm just going to go straight across, straight up I mean, whoops. And when you get to the top here, I'm not going to go all the way over. I'm going to make this into the handle. So I'm just going to curl it around my finger a little bit and then pop it onto this side. And just check that that's the right sort of length of handle that you want. I think I might just turn it over there. Let's see if that's better. Oh, that's better. It makes a better handle to hold. I'm just going to give it a little bit more though. That looks about right. And then just going to push it down. Across the bottom. One nice thing about the adhesive tear and tape as well is you can just take the ribbon off um, if it's not quite straight and just you don't lose any of the stickiness really of it. It doesn't stick onto the acetate box or anything. Okay, now we need to make the other handle the same length. Okay, and go down this side. And then back to where we started from. I'm just going to cut that off. And you'll see that I'm cutting it so that it's, it finishes at the edge of the box. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little glue dot there rather than having it join in the middle. It just looks a little bit neater if you have it sort of joining at the edge of the box. So oh, there we go. So there we are with our handle. Now that you know your ribbon's in the right place, you can just go along and just make sure it's fully adhered and it's not gonna come off. There we go. Just get rid of this paper. Uh, I'm going to put my insert back in. Okay. Now, next of all, I'm just going to do a very simple decoration. I'm not doing any uh, sentiments on the front or anything. I'm just going to make the little daisy using the daisy punch. Uh, this is the punch that we use. And what I've already done is in the berry burst, which matches the ribbon, I've cut out two of the daisies. And then using vellum, and this is stamping up vellum, which is really quite thick. I have used vellum in the past from other companies. That's only the thickness of greaseproof paper or wax paper. But stamping up vellum is almost like card. I like it much, much better. And I've just cut one of the daisies out with, with the vellum. And I'm going to pop, whoops, I'm going to pop a glue dot on the first daisy here. And then I'm going to put the vellum piece. And I'm just going to slightly offset it. Not so that it fills in all the gap here, just slightly offset. Then another glue dot. And then I'm going to put the third 
daisy on the top. There. Just like that. I'm just going to fluff it up a little bit. And I do like the look of the daisies just with that vellum in, especially when it's done in white card. I think that looks really pretty. Okay, so you can put it in the middle like I did here. Or when Julie made hers, she had one just on the handle like that, which I thought looked quite pretty too. And I think this time I'm going to put mine on the handle. I'm going to put a little dimensional on the back. Like that. And then with my small punch, which has just escaped. Where have you gone, small punch? Oh, there it is. My little half inch punch. I'm just going to cut a little piece of white card, just from scrap, not using anything special. And then let's find another glue dot and attach it. Attach it to the front, like this. Going to pop this onto our bag. Just squash it down so that you know that dimensional has taken a hold. And then I've got the faceted gems that I'm just going to use for the centre here. If you don't have the faceted gems, then you can use you know, um, another little circle. You could cut one out. In fact, let me show you that. Let's get the smaller circle punch. And these are my old punches. But if you have the layering circles, you could use that. Um, there are lots of the dies that we have that just have a tiny circle as well. Uh, let's see what it looks like with just a little pink piece in. It's very pretty. But I think I like the, um, the faceted gems a little bit more. So I think I'll just change that and pop a faceted gem on. Oh, now they've disappeared. Where have they gone? Um, I'm having one of those days where everything I look for, I just put it down and then it disappears. But here are the faceted gems. And they come in the gold and the silver. I'm not quite sure which colour I want. Now let's... I'm just going to offer it up. I'm not going to stick it on. So here it is with the silver. Let's pop it back on there. And let's look at it in the gold. I think, oh, I don't know. I think I'm going to go with the silver. I like the silver. Or the clear. There we go. So there we are. That's the little box bag all finished. So quick, so simple. And once you get cards in there, then the, um, the insert stays down. At the moment, you'll see it keeps moving because it's got no weight in there to keep it down. But as soon as you've got your cards and envelopes in, then it keeps it down. So there we are, that's my two little box bags. And uh, I would like to thank Julie again for her pictures and uh, her video showing how to make the box bag go in vertically. Um, but I hope you like those. Stay tuned for the second video because in the second video I'm going to show you how to make the cards to go inside. So thanks very much for watching everybody and I'll see you soon for the second video. Bye!